I'm Reverend Kala Wosho of uh, Fountain Wisdom Ministries. And as we wait on the Lord to move into the coming year, I just want you to know that, it, first of all, it's necessary for us to, first of all, give thanks for life that has been preserved, for all the things that have happened in the first, in this year, 2014, good, bad, and ugly. But you know what? Our heart attitude should be that of thanksgiving. Our heart should be that of gratitude to God for his faithfulness in our lives, for his faithfulness of our families. And what else can we say? The fact that we are alive today, we should be grateful. And God has a lot to say to us as we round up this year and come into the new year. But I can tell you straight away that the coming year 2015 is a year of restoration, demonstration, and elevation. And one word that captures all of that is a year of favor. But to get us into that, we need to come into alignment with God's ways. We need to come into alignment with God's kingdom. It's not enough to say God has said something. We need to labor and press in into what God has said. And that's why it gives me joy to be able to share this with you. I've been waiting on the Lord since the beginning of this month, December. And I've been praying and fasting and asking God questions. God, what's going on? Where are we in your program? What is the plan that you have? And how are we going to execute these plans? So as we go through this prophetic time, and that's, I'm sure some of you have waited on the Lord in prayer and fasting as the year came to an end, or has come to an end, and we're preparing to step into the new year, 2015. I want you to know three things you must never forget. It's a year of restoration, a year of demonstration, and a year of elevation. Straight away, every year, everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm have stolen from you shall be restored. The years that have been lost shall be restored. It's a year of God's demonstration of his power, his favor on your behalf. I think in the new year, I'll be doing a series on favor just to break down the things God has impressed upon my heart. And it's also a year of promotion, divine elevation. God is going to promote you and elevate you to the place where you truly belong. But to get us started, we need to go into the Word and check the Scriptures. Because after I heard these things, I had to labor in the Word to say, God, where are the Scriptures I can stand on? So God gave me a few Scriptures. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you for our time together. We thank you for everyone who is watching this. And I thank you, Father, for the privilege and the honor to bring your word to your people as a roundup 2014 to enter into 2015. I pray, Father, that you will grant me utterance and you grant your people a heart of understanding that the prophetic flow will be there so that your name can be glorified, that they will pick that spirit of yours, that prophetic spirit of yours, O oh God, and they will know that these are the truth is the Lord speaking and they can act on your word and see results happen in their lives. The first scripture I want to read, share with you is found in Isaiah 42. It says, Jehovah have called thee in righteousness, and will take hold of thy hand, and will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light to the nations. That's our call. In the final wisdom ministries, we have been called to create a forum where God's will can flow with him, but we've also been called to be a light to the nations. We are called to affect the nations. And that is very paramount in the mind of God. In verse Isaiah 42, verse 7, it says, To open the blind eyes, to bring forth the prisoner from the prison, them that sit in darkness and out of the house of restraint. I am Jehovah. That is my name, and my glory I will give to no other. Neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth, I will cause you to hear them. I want you to know God is saying to us, that, you know, our, our, our name is Fountain of Wisdom Ministries. And if you think about that, in Isaiah 6, uh, 33, it says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. That's why we are called to everyone who is saved. We're called to those that God opportunes us to impact, that you should give them the wisdom of God. What that wisdom does is that it helps you to recognize where you are in the program of God. It helps you to recognize what you're going through. It helps you to recognize how to conduct yourself in that phase so you can be prepared to enter the next phase. And I want you to know as we cross over into the new year, we're preparing to enter a new phase. In Isaiah 43, it says, Remember not the former things. In other words, it says, call to remembrance all the things that have happened. So there's a selectiveness in remembering. Remember not the former things, neither consider the ancient things. Behold, I do a new thing. What's God going to do? A new thing. Now it shall spring forth and shall you not know it. I'll even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the waste. The beast of the field shall glorify me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I will give waters in the wilderness, rivers 
in the waste to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people have I formed for myself and they show, show forth my praise. I want you to know God is in the business of doing these things. He says he gives us as a light to the nations. Jesus said we should go in all the world and make disciples of nations. The call of fountain of wisdom is not only to make disciples but to help people fulfill destiny to develop them, to grow them, to help them become all that God wants, create a forum where my people can flow with me. So as we labor together and see this come to pass, this new year is a year of restoration. That's the first word I heard in my spirit. Restoration. In Joel 2, it says, all the years that the canker worm have eaten, all the years that the palmer worm have eaten, all the years that the locust and the caterpillar have eaten, listen, he will restore. That's a powerful word. You know, sometimes you think about how much you have labored in the Lord, how much you've done things and you have not seen the fruit of it. He says, I will restore. I want you to know that this is a year of restoration. It's a year of divine favor. It's a year of divine elevation. So, well, how do you know these things will come to pass? Because God said it and you're going to press into it. Because God said it and we are going to press into it. It says a year of divine elevation. It's a year of divine restoration and it's a year of divine demonstration. Take note of those three words. But what's my responsibility? Alignment. What's your responsibility? Alignment. Alignment with the kingdom. Alignment with the ways of God. Alignment with the word of God. Alignment with the thoughts of God. And then alignment with the vision that God has given the house, fountain of wisdom. So I want you to know that alignment is the key to the fulfillment of his word. And we are going to have to place a demand on his power anyway. We're going to have to place a demand on his, on his, on his ability. Yes, we're going to have to be bolder than we've been with our faith. We're going to have to be more confident than we've been with our faith. Yes, we're going to have to do such things. So, in talking about restoration, Joel chapter 2 is the first one. And in talking about favor, I want you to know that God is going to restore you to the place of favor. So, what do you mean by that? Well, the way I saw it is that God was saying that the things that you have cried about, the things that you have prayed about, the things you've longed for that are available to you in the covenant, God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to release that favor. You see, this is how it works. The covenant has to do with the blessing. That's the covenant we have with God through Jesus Christ. We are the seed of Abraham. So the blessing of Abraham is upon us. He said, but there's another dimension to that, that with the blessing comes the favor. And the favor is what gives the opportunities for you to take advantage so that the blessing can come upon you. I'm not sure you got that right. It says he's going to restore everything that has been lost. So, but how is he going to do it? Number one, you will come to terms with the fact that you have been blessed with the blessing of Abraham. You have been blessed beyond the curse. It says God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. So you are blessed. He said, but with the blessing comes the favor. That favor is what New Testament calls grace. That grace, that favor is what will create the opportunities for you, for you to press in into the blessing. In other words, God is not just saying, I will bless you in the air. He's saying, I'll favor you. In favoring you, he will cause opportunities to come your way so you can enter into the blessing. And it was, I was glad God showed me that. Because we've been talking about the blessing. All of us are blessed. How come not everybody's experiencing the blessing? How come not everybody's experiencing the things that God has said? It says because a lot of them do not see the favor dimension to it. That the blessing is there, but the favor comes upon you to accomplish in you and through you what you couldn't accomplish for yourself. So that's why we're talking about it today. And I, I'm, I'm thanking God for the opportunity to share this with you. Now, you see, these are the things God laid on my heart. He says, I'll do a new thing. The years that the canker worm have taken will be restored. And the time to favor Zion has come. It talks about promotion, protection, provision. All of them will enter a new level. So I want you to get ready for the new level that God is taking you into. But like I said, you have to come into alignment with his ways, with his kingdom, with his word. How do you come into alignment? By obedience. How do you come into alignment? By yielding yourself to his spirit. How do you come into alignment? By realizing that these things are not going to happen like a, ripe, a bundle of ripe cherries. They're just going to fall upon you. No. God's word is full of his promotional plans. Even when we did the series Single Baron, I was saying in that message that the barren, for the barren to sing, that means the barren is about to come to an end of their barrenness. That means the barren, the barren is picking signals in the spirit that the time for my, barren is over, my barrenness is over. So it says, sing, O barren, for 
Your days of fruitfulness are about to come. So that's the transition that many of us do not make. That you know, we're in a situation and we're like, oh God, why is this happening to me? But if we can look up, like God told Abraham, look up as far as your eyes can see, I have given to you. I tell you what, it takes a lot of courage to look up. It takes lots of boldness to look up. It takes a lot of determination to look up and not just look down and say, well, I don't know why, I don't know why. No, it's time to look up. Why? When you look up, you see the great things God has for you. When you look up, you see the new dimensions God has for you. When you look up, you see the new things God wants to drop into your life. Is there any relevance to those things to where you are right now? Plenty. But it starts with your alignment. One of the alignments I like to share with you is the words of your mouth. The words of your mouth. We all major on criticizing others. We major on false instead of majoring on the covenant. Instead of majoring on the word of God, where we can speak God's word and, 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 and attract to ourselves, as it were, the things that we're speaking. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, shall have whatsoever he said. Many of us are saying what we have, instead of saying what we desire. We're saying what we, we're describing in detail what we have instead of describing in detail what God says will come to pass in our lives. So I just want to share with you some 10 principles of the favor of God that was coming upon your life. I call it 10 benefits of walking in favor. Number one, supernatural increase and uh, super, supernatural increase in power. What does that mean? That if you look at the life of Joseph, God supernaturally increased Joseph no matter where Joseph was. When he was sold as a slave, God supernaturally increased him that even his Egyptian master said, the hand of God is upon this guy. When Joseph was in the house of, uh, in, the, in the prison as a result of Potiphar's wife, the Bible says that everything that the, the head of the jail or saw, he let, uh, everything that Joseph touched, the head of the jail, let Joseph handle it. Why? Because the favor of God was upon him. Those are the benefits of walking in favor. Number two, restoration of everything that the enemy has stolen from you. When the children of Israel were to leave the land of Egypt, the Bible says that God told them to plunder the Egyptian. You know what that tells me? God granted them favor and they gave them their things and everything that the enemy has stolen from them as slaves was restored to them. Number three, we will receive honor in the midst of opposition. God is able, like in the days of Moses, when the children of Israel were to leave the land of Egypt, whenever the plagues came, the house of Moses, the land of the children of Israel were preserved. That means that God honored their faith, honored their walk with him by preserving them in the midst of their adversaries. I want you to know that is part of the favor of God that you can believe God for this year. That no matter what's going on around you, the favor of God rests upon you. And you should say that with your mouth, that the favor of God is upon my life. The favor of God rests upon my home. The favor of God is upon everything I lay my hands on to do. Why? Because you have been highly favored. The Bible says, with favor, he will encompass you as with a shield, Psalm 5. With favor, he will encompass you as a shield. It says, call, call out, come unto me, all you who, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the burden of God is light. Why is it light? Because it has to do with you yielding to God, and he's going to work through you. So we'll receive honors even in the midst of our adversary. Number four, we'll have increase of assets. When Joshua was taking the land, God was increasing the I said, you know, you can believe God for land and real estate increase in this year. Massive increase of, in assets. God is in the business of giving you favor. And number five, you against all odds, you will have great victories, which is similar to the one I said before. Against all odds, you will have great, great victories. You have received honor in the midst of your enemies. And in this case, it says you have great victories. Number six, you will be recognized like little David. You know, when David was when to be called to be made king, the father did not even bring him up as one of his kids. But Samuel sat down and said, God said, this is not, you've not found the right person. So Samuel said, we're not going to sit down except this other guy comes. And when David came, God said, that's him. I want you to know favor will make you gain recognition even in the most impossible situation. And also Bible says that in 1 Peter 5, 6, it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he will exalt you. You know what that tells me? God is going to give you preferential treatment. In this year, expect it. In this year, expect it. Because God is going to give you preferential treatments. Then, what about the next one? That God is going to grant your petitions. Esther prayed certain prayer and God granted her petition. 
and I want you to know it's found in Esther 5, 6 to 7. The professional treatment is found in 1 Peter 5, 6. God is going to grant your petitions. And number nine, policies and rules can be changed or reversed for your advantage, just like it happened in the days of Esther. It's part of our benefit of working in favor. And that's why I said it's a year of restoration. It's a year of demonstration and it's also a year of elevation promotion is coming your way then number 10 we won't have to fight all uh, uh, we would have to fight we won't have to fight all our battles because some battles the lord will fight them for us sound in first samuel 17 45 and 47 when samuel david said you come against me with rods and all that I come against you in the name of the lord of hosts and he went on to say, who's that this battle is the Lord? I remember uh, Jehoshaphat also said the same thing in 2 Chronicles 20. He said, the battle is the Lord's. I want you to know that in this year, many of your battles will be fought by the Lord. But you need to position yourself in faith. You need to position yourself in praise. You need to position yourself in worship. You need to position yourself. So your lifestyle is the key to this new year coming. Your lifestyle is the key to the restoration, the demonstration, and the elevation that is coming your way so what should you do as a person what should i do as a person how can i prepare myself well first of all you need to change the way you are thinking if you have been thinking wrong change the way you're talking if you've been talking wrong and become a grateful person become somebody with a heavy load of gratitude and become somebody with a heavy expectation you see a lot of times when we have an expectation and we are disappointed it affects our faith and our confidence and our expectation goes lower than before let not that happen again if you are disappointed in one expectation what you need is to fellowship more with god get the revelation of his plans and purposes for your life and elevate your expectation again don't let the circumstances of your life determine your expectation let the word of god and your covenant with god determine your expectation a lot of people are defeated today because their circumstances the failures of yesterday have conditioned their mind so they don't have confidence that god will do anything new i want you to know that this year is a year of restoration a year of demonstration and a year of what elevation a year of promotion don't let the circumstances of your life determine that you see whenever you pray and you don't get answers what you need is a revelation of god that's it you see the men of old when jesus was on earth the disciples would say master how come we couldn't do this how come this prayer we prayed didn't get answered and jesus will always explain to them he will always tell them things that they never knew before or things that they didn't understand even though he had told them before. So what that tells me is, is that God is not interested in not answering our prayers, but God is interested in building a relationship with us so that we can participate with him for the things we are asking for to come to pass. Some of us think God is just you know, like a Father Christmas who gives it to us whenever he wants to. No, God is expecting you also to be bold, to be courageous and ask and be determined. Let, that, let, that, let the resolution be inside you, even though he's going to fight on your behalf, even though he's going to uh, work things out for you, even though he's going to be the one taking on the whole whatever for you, he still wants you to participate with him. He still wants you to say, you know what? I believe you, God. I remember the men of old, who, you know, when Jesus was on earth, so there were some guys who, when there was no way to get their sick friend to Jesus, the Bible says they removed the roof and lowered their friend through the roof. Now that's some faith. I mean, those guys were resolved that they will get results. And sometimes a lot of us don't have such resolution. We are just timid and, you know, well, if God wants it, if God doesn't want it. No, sometimes you need to be that bold. Jesus said, looked at them and the Bible says he saw their faith. Now, the man who was sick who couldn't help himself must have faith in his friends. The man who was lowering him down through the roof must have faith that Jesus Christ will heal him. So they did whatever they could and should to get that man to be in the presence of Jesus. I want you to know that sometimes that is the kind of faith it takes. If you've been in a situation for so long and you've not seen any radical change, A, you need an insight, you need a revelation, you need something. You know, there's something about coming into something new based on the revelation that you now have in Christ. I, I can't explain it further than that. The, the, I think the Bible says it somewhere that, that the grace that will appear to us at the revelation of Christ. It's, 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 it's as if the revelation of Christ precedes the revelation of another level of grace coming to you. The grace that will appear at the revelation. Now, if you take it literally in that scripture, I think it's in the, one of the gospels on one of the epistles. It says the grace that will appear at the revelation of Christ. That means that in, in the end of time, when Christ will be made manifest in the second coming, there will be another level of grace. But if you take it literally for what it says in our present day application, it also can mean that that there is a new revelation of Christ that will 
usher in a new level of grace. And if you hear what I'm saying, that grace can be interpreted favor, that means that every level of revelation of Christ I get, a new level of favor is open to me. So a lot of times when we just look at our needs and we pray and we don't get answers and we feel maybe God doesn't want me to have it or maybe God is not in or maybe whatever, it's better to go back to God in prayer and get the revelation and insight into God's ways, God's plan, God's purposes. Sometimes in my own life I've prayed about some things and God will show me later that you, you did not believe you received it. Something as simple as that. You did not believe you received it when you prayed. I said, but I thought I did. No, you didn't. Because the next time you spoke, you were saying, I hope it will come. But Jesus said, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. So it can be just as small insight as believe you receive. That is the thing that is holding you back. But if you don't know that, you would just think, oh, maybe God doesn't want it. Or maybe the demons are so powerful. No demon is powerful enough to stop the power of God in your life, except you give them a chance. Except you permit the devil. The Bible says, give him no place. Bible says give him more. What are the things Satan uses? Offenses. He uses unforgiveness. He uses uh, strife. He uses all those things to hinder the power of God from flowing on your behalf. So what you do, do you cultivate a lifestyle that do not tolerate offenses, will not tolerate strife, will not tolerate unforgiveness. Well, how do you do that? By forgiving. How do you do that? Well, sometimes you die to your own opinion about certain things. And let God take over. Let God build you up. Let God, you know, I, I, I taught you in one of my series years ago that there's a place called death, burial, and resurrection. You know, that the Jesus Christ death, burial, and resurrection was for us as a divine exchange. It's also for us as a divine pattern. Those who are in the house, you know what I'm talking about. It's a divine pattern because there's a dying to something for there to be a resurrection of something else. So I just want you to know that this is the year where God wants you to resurrect from everything you have died to. And he wants you to demonstrate, he wants to demonstrate his power. What are the three things I said? Restoration, demonstration, and elevation or you can say promotion you know the three p's we have in this ministry provision promotion preservation provision promotion preservation god is taking it to another level restoration demonstration of his power demonstration of his favor demonstration of his redemptive blessings demonstration of his goodness in your life and i want you to have faith for these things and then elevation god is going to promote you to where you truly belong so many of you have labored and labored and labored and God has seen your labor and he says the time of promotion has come. The set time of favor has come. God is saying, lift up your head. It's time to be elevated. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. Don't make it look like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm ready for it. Just prepare your heart because God is about to elevate you. You're going to walk in divine favor like never before. The people, you know, there's a story about Elijah. And that's why I love the Bible. There's so many snippets of prophetic insights in God's word that when you look at anything, any part of the Bible, something like Elijah, for instance, he, he, he needed the strength of God when he was to pursue the chariots of Ahab. And then the angel came and gave him divine strength by giving him food from heaven. And the Bible says he outran the chariots. You know what that tells me? Those of your mates who seem to have left you behind with this new power, this new thing God is doing, you will outrun some of them. You will practically run beyond them. So that's why I love the word of God. You know, I was reading through Matthew today, Matthew 24, and Jesus was talking about the sign of the end time. And it sounded as if he was reading the newspapers today. But it says, do not be afraid that the time, the end has not come. He said, when you hear of this, don't let your heart be troubled. When you hear of that, don't let your heart be troubled. You know what he's saying? That in the midst of all this trouble, I will still keep my own and my will will still come to pass. And you read Psalm 19 and Matthew 13 as well, when he was talking about the parable of the wheat and the tears. It says an enemy has done this. So an enemy has planted his own agents, as it were, on the earth today. And they're devastating things around us. But those of us who are agents of God and planted by God, we should keep our heart right. We should not let ourselves be troubled. Neither let this circumstances of life throw us overboard but rather 
This is a time to be strong. This is a time to believe God. This is a time to be focused. This is a time to be obedient, to be yielded, and to be sensitive to the things of the Spirit. This is a time to resist the devil according to the Word of God, and he will flee from us. This is the time to walk in the favor of God. So, in addition to any other thing you do, change your vocabulary. Start speaking, the favor of God is upon my house. The favor of God is upon my life. Change your vocabulary. Start speaking to every mountain and say, I command you mountain, go in the name of Jesus. And start calling the things that be not as though they were. Start calling the favor of God upon your house. Start calling your provision. Start calling everything you need to call. As long as you can see the scripture and it's a provision in the word, you have a right to it. Because the blessing of Abraham is yours. The blessing of God rests upon the house of the righteous. The Bible says he will bless the righteous and with favor he will encompass him as with a shield. And it says the blessing of God rests upon the righteous. The blessing of God will increase in your house. You are the one to speak it. You are the one to expect it. You are the one to talk about it. And I want you to know that if you're going to activate these things in your life, you need to get aggressive saying them. You're not just going to say them occasionally. You're going to say them aggressively. You're going to say them repeatedly. You're going to say them over and over and over. And you're going to bust into this new realm because God's word will never return to him void. Whatever Satan has planned for you is canceled in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you. And I want you to know you will live and not die. You will fulfill destiny. You will do the will of him that has sent you while it is day. The night comes when no man can walk. You will live, fulfill destiny. You will see your children's children. None of us will die before our time. None of us will become a casualty. None of us will fail in the things that God has said. Whatever plan Satan has planned for our lives, we cancel them now and forever in Jesus' name. Whatever plan the enemy through the flesh, through the circumstances of our lives, want to orchestrate in our lives, we nullify them in the name of Jesus. I pray over you and I pray over your family. I pray over your household. I pray over your businesses. I pray over your, your, uh, your, your careers and I decree and declare restoration, demonstration demonstration of God's goodness and divine elevation. That's your portion. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Move into this new year with a great sense of assurance, with a great sense of confidence, with a great sense of power, knowing that the favor of God rests upon you. See, when the Bible says, I will make your name great, talking to Abraham, you can receive that as well. When the Bible says that you will be a blessing uh, you'll be blessed and you'll be a blessing. Anyone that curses you shall be cursed. Anyone that stands against you I will, that shall be resisted. I want you to know that that belongs to you because you are a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ and the blessing of Abraham is your blessing. Everything God has pronounced about Abraham, you can say, you know what, I have the courage and the boldness to say yes. But what is the secret of that blessing? So that you can be a blessing to other people. So in addition, make up your mind. You know what I found out? The tithing is still a key to the blessing. If you're going to change in any area, change in your giving, change in your speaking, be a giver, not just a receiver. Don't let the things that God will bring into your life come and possess you. You be free to give them out. That is part of how you know that you're getting ready for the promotion. The reason why sometimes people are not promoted and elevated and the things that God has for them is not coming to pass is because they're not matured enough to handle them. But if you are able to handle them, God will release them to you. And this is one way to do it. The tithe. Don't joke with that. It says it will open the windows of heaven. The only other time they talk about windows of heaven being open was Noah's flood. So God wants to rain down on you favor and divine opportunities that will cause you to enter into the blessing. I want you to know that the tithe is not like in the Old Testament when it is a debt they owed. The tithe is a seed we sow. So I want you to know there's a difference between the tithe in the Old Testament and tithe in the New Testament. But the principle of giving, the principle of recognition that God is my source, is what is behind the tithe. So I want you to know that in your giving, because it says the blessing of God will come upon you. And this is the year of his divine favor. I want you to say it, write it on the doorpost of your house. This is my year of divine favor. And every year, every month, expect more and more and more. And speak it more. Increase more. And let the favor of God encompass you completely from the least to the greatest, or every member of your household, even to your pet, if you have a pet, anyone in your house should come under the divine favor of God. Until next time, this is Reverend Kolei Wosho, who wants to just pray the prayer of faith over you and say, God bless you real good. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, all that has been released let it be a part of the lives of your people. For everyone who is receiving this, Lord, let their lives never be the same again. 
We thank you and we bless you. Let the favor of God rest upon them. Let the goodness of God rest upon them. Let the power of God make a difference and let the powers of darkness flee before them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says they'll come against us one way, they'll flee before us in seven ways. Let everything that has come against your people flee before them in seven ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks and we bless you. Bless us as we enter this 2015 and cause us to enter into your favor like never before. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.